Okay, here we are, we're heading into the Peak District. It's quarter past four in the morning. Uh, we're getting up early to uh, get some shots of the sunrise. In around about half an hour, the sun should be coming up. It's one of the downsides of summer, unfortunately. Uh, really early mornings for sunrise, but it's good to get out and uh, yeah, just a little over half an hour, we should be there. And um, we'll start to see the sun coming up and hopefully get some really good shots. Okay, so I found a really nice spot. I've got this fence creating a leading line into the picture. I've also got the path as well, which leads right up onto the top of the mountain. And up there, we've obviously got the lovely sun coming down on the side of the hill, creating some beautiful like yellow and orange tones. So at the moment, I'm at an f-stop of eight. And I've got a shutter speed of 1800, ISO 64. I'm not really concerned about my shutter speed because I'm on the tripod anyway. And I'm just kind of like going through the scene at the minute finding different focus points. I might want to stack it later, so it's nice to have the different focus points in the scene. There's some people walking down there. I might leave them in, or I can also remove them in Photoshop later. And uh, I might make a video when I do that and show you how I do it. Okay, so I've got some good shots in this bit. I think we'll move on, go over the hill a bit. The sun's coming up now, it's getting a bit stronger. It's not ideal conditions now, but the light's still pretty good. We're at the end of golden hour. So I'm really enjoying using my Z7. It feels really nicely balanced. It's really light. Um, I can grip it really well. It fits in my hand nicely. The buttons all just feel really good and work really well. I like the fact that it goes down to ISO 64. Um, and so far the pictures are looking great on the back of the screen at least. I've not obviously had them in the computer yet. But yeah, so far so good, really loving it. So as you can see, it was a beautiful sunny morning up in the peaks. The weather was fantastic, not a cloud in the sky, which funnily enough is probably my only slight uh, complaint about the weather because it's sometimes nice just to have those clouds, a little bit of cloud in the sky, just to pick up the light from the sun and give a little bit of texture and interest in the sky. But can't complain too much, it was great and um, got some great images. This first one I've picked out, I've, uh, I've just tried to emphasise a bit of the foreground detail there with the rocks. So I'm using the 24 to 70 millimeter lens on its widest setting at 24 millimeters, and just angling it down just a little bit so it's got those rocks. I think I might have taken two shots with this one um, and stacked it so I've got the rocks focused in one of the images and I'm focusing a little further into the scene on the second image and then I've merged the two together so just um, extending that depth of field a little bit and uh, yeah I, I, I quite like this one it's a little bit different from the others uh, just because of that foreground detail so you've got the nice interest in the background with the sun washing over the hills but also a little bit of interest in the foreground as well so in this second one 
Um, I really like the, just the tones and the warm yellows. It's just so rich and the sun just feels so warm. Um, this is actually, I, I've taken this shot before. Um, so I, I knew what I was trying to get when I took this shot. Um, but it just looks so much more detailed now with the Z7. Um, the contrast and the dynamic range. Yeah, it's looking great. I think um, the only thing it's missing again is just something in the sky to add a little bit of interest. But overall, really happy with this image. And this is the third one I picked out. So we've got the uh, the leading line coming in from the bottom left with the fence. And then you've got the path on the right coming in, creating another leading line, which really just draws you in. And then onto that path that just goes up to the top of the hill. And then you've got the horizon and the sun. So I think that works really well. And yeah, it's worth getting up at 3am in the morning uh, for that 440 sunrise because the colours just look great. Everything just looks better at that time in the morning. And uh, some nice fog as well, uh, just rising up in the bottom of the valleys there. Uh, so yeah, and again, this is a similar image. I've taken this, this shot a few times. Um, but it's nice to go back and just try and refine that try and refine your compositions and it was also great to test out the Z7 and uh, just get the extra resolution in those pictures so yeah really happy overall. So I'm going to show you how I edited that last picture. We're in Adobe Lightroom, this is the picture we're going to edit so we'll take that into the develop and you'll notice that's quite dark to start with. Particularly in the uh, the shadow, you can't see a lot of the detail there, but that's been purposefully underexposed to uh, protect the highlights. Um, because I know that, because it's a raw file, it comes straight out of the camera, it's, a raw file's got so much more information than, say, a JPEG. And you can bring some of that information back in the, in the dark areas. I mean, you can do that with the, uh, the bright areas as well, but it's easier and you get tend to get better results bringing the details back in the darker areas. So in images like this where I've got areas of strong highlights, the, the sun and the sky, and, uh, and then the dark areas, I'll tend to underexpose and, and have my darker areas too dark so that I can bring those back. Um, and I'll start usually uh, with the auto function. So you see there that immediately brings back a lot of the detail in the shadows. That's just a starting point. We're going to tweak some of the other parameters to, to get this looking how we want it. Now you'll notice up in the top right hand corner, uh, there's a bit of a spot here. I didn't notice this at the time, but um, a little speck had gotten onto my sensor when I was changing my lens. And there's also another fainter one here. Um, I didn't notice this until about halfway through uh, the, the morning, but that's not a problem. We can get rid of that in Photoshop a bit later. Um, what we're going to do um, now, after we've used the auto function, is just uh, tweak the tone settings a little bit. So <clears throat> I'm not going to play with the exposure for now. Um, it is just still looking a bit dark, but I'm going to leave that just for a second. First of all, I'm just going to tweak the highlights. So we'll bring that. Um, let's have a look. Bring it up to about there. That just brings some of the highlights back. And similarly with the shadows, we'll just bring a bit more shadow detail back. Not too much about there, I think. Slight tweak to the whites. What about the blacks? Uh, okay, we'll leave that there for a minute. Um, so after I've done my tone settings, I'll tend to go to uh, the colour settings. So first of all, I'll play around with the hue. The hue is um, what colour it actually is. So with the hue, you can choose, say, the yellows, reds, whatever, and actually change those to a, a different colour. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna start with the greens. Um, I don't like really green greens. It's just a personal thing of mine, so I'm going to take that down a bit until it gets a little bit more yellow. Round about there looks good to me. And um, the orange in the sun, 
be nice to get that a little bit pinky. Um, now the thing is you don't want to go too much with these, it's tempting just to crank them and get those crazy effects, you know, but you're not really trying to do that, I mean you might be trying to do that, but what I'm trying to do is just emphasise little details of my picture, just to kind of create what I was, what I was experiencing on the morning. And it was kind of like, it felt like there was this warm glow just kind of washing over the whole hillside. So, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that orange back up a bit, but I'm going to leave it about minus 10 and it just gives it that little bit of pinkiness. Um, I can leave the aqua blue. I'm going to boost the blue just a little bit, I think. Um, just that just gives it a slightly more, slightly, slightly, slightly amount of purple. Again, you don't want to overdo it. And I'll leave the purple and magenta. Um, so moving on to saturation, then in the colour settings, this is just how rich the colours are. So um, yeah, how, how saturated they are, <laughs> how vibrant. Um, red, I'm going to leave that one. Uh, I want to increase the saturation of my orange a bit. Again, I'll usually pump it up, see what it looks like, and then bring it back down, because you don't want it too much. I'm going to bring it right back down, actually, around about 10, 9 will do. Okay, uh, yellow. Now, it'd be nice to kind of pump that up a little bit as well, but I'm going to leave it a bit, just because I don't want to affect the grass, because uh, there's yellows in the grass areas as well. Um, let's have a look. I can leave the... Uh, bring the green down, maybe. Not a lot, just a little bit. Um, don't bother about the aqua. The blue. We'll just boost that a little bit, just for the sky. Get a bit bluer in the sky. Uh, purple and magenta, we don't need to bother with those. And then luminosity, uh, or luminance. Um, it's just how bright uh, the colours are, dark or light. And dark or bright they are. So, um, I'm not going to change the orange, I might just darken the yellow slightly. Yeah, that looks good I think. Uh, blue, could just darken the sky a bit, but I think I'm going to change some settings, some global settings which will darken the sky, so I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, I think that's looking okay. So. We'll move on. Um, I've not really looked at sharpening or um, or noise reduction yet. Um, the auto settings automatically added a little bit of sharpening. Um, so you can see that if I turn that on and off, that's without. And then that, it's not a lot, it's just a little bit. I mean, the Z7 is, because of the, the number of megapixels, it, it looks really sharp anyway, and, and the lens is great, so. And um, there is a bit of noise there because I brought up the um, the shadows because it was really underexposed and I've brought that up. It kind of like, even though I was using ISO 64, it's kind of like almost changed the ISO in that. I mean, it hasn't, but it, it, it created the effect that you would get with a higher ISO in that area. So what I'm going to do is use the luminance slider in noise reduction, bring that up to about maybe, I don't know, 20 something, nearly 30. And that just softens that noise. So I'll just turn it off there. You can see that that's how it was and then back on, softens it up. Barely perceptible when, um, when you zoomed out, but it does make a difference. Particularly if you're gonna print these as well. So um, sharpening, we'll leave that with the settings that the auto function gave us. Um, right, how are we looking then? I think what we're going to do, we're going to work on some of the presence settings now. And now these, some of the really funky settings, <laughs> uh, you know, you can pump these up and get these really super saturated effects, um, which is really tempting uh, when you're first starting out. I know I fell for that one or two times. But really you want to use these quite sparingly, be a bit restrained with them and not pump them too much. 
So I'm just going to go to about there with the dehaze. Dehaze kind of adds like contrast and saturation, I think. Um, clarity, this is kind of like a sharpening, and you'll see again it. It almost when you first do it, you think, "Wow, that looks great," but you know, the longer you look at it, you think nah, that just looks weird actually. So you don't want to do it too much. Um, going to bring that back down. So I'm not. I'm, I'm actually going to go minus with this. I'm, if you go like super minus, you, you know, you really soften your image. I'm just going to do it a real, really tiny bit. Um, and then texture. That's also like a, a sharpening tool, um, but, but it works on a much more smaller scale. So you know, you'll it'll sharpen finer edges rather where clarity works on like a larger scale of sharpening. Um, and again, I don't want too much of that. I'm going to bring that right down. Maybe just just the smallest amount, plus one. And then we've got vibrance and saturation. So the saturation, I'm going to bring that down because if you remember, we pumped up some of the saturation for the individual colours. So globally, I'm going to bring the saturation down a bit just to compensate. Um, and then vibrance, it's very similar to saturation, but I think what it is is saturation is the overall kind of richness of colours, whereas vibrance is kind of like the relative saturation between colours. So I'm just going to bring that down to about 10. Um, and now what I want to do, so I've, I've got the sky more or less where I want it now, but I want to lighten the bottom part of the picture where the rocks are and the fence and the path. So I'm going to use this tool up here, which is kind of like a, simulates a, like a, a grad filter, it's like a, a gradient. And then if I just draw the gradient up here, maybe up to about there. If I if you press O on your keyboard, it gives you the overlay, which shows you what's going to be affected basically by the sliders. So I'm just going to bring the exposure up of the bottom of that of the picture. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to go, just close that. I'm going to go back to my global settings. I'm just going to reduce the, the overall exposure just to bring the sky down. So obviously that's made the bottom darker as well, but the sky is more like what I want now. And then if I go back to my gradient, what I can do then is yeah, pump that exposure up a bit. to around about there and we can affect these highlights a bit as well 20 uh, maybe the whites bring those up a little bit as well okay I'll close that. Now, another thing I want to do is just kind of emphasize that area with the sun. Because like I said, I remember it being really vivid, the light, it was just kind of like the, the yellowy orange light was just washing over the hills. Um, so I'm gonna emphasize, what I'm gonna use is uh, this tool, which is like the, uh, the gradient tool, they say it's a radial one, a radial gradient tool. And I'm just going to draw that out from the centre of the sun. Um, maybe something like that. And I'm going to bring the highlights. I'm going to invert that. That just uh, affects inside the circle rather than outside it. So let's have a look. Well, maybe we just bring down the highlights a bit. And uh, we'll bring down the dehaze. 
so that makes it more hazy in a way and it's just going to soften that whole area just give it that glowy ethereal quality to it maybe we'll bring the contrast down just a touch okay it's getting more where I want it to be um, what I'm going to do now is just darken this a bit, it just needs to be a bit a bit rich, a bit more black, so I'm just going to bring the, the blacks down. Yeah, that's looking nice I think now. Um, and that's probably about it in Lightroom. What I'm going to do now is bring this into Photoshop. You'll see there's some people down there, I'm going to get rid of those people and um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the uh, the spots. So what we can do is just right click that, edit in Photoshop, just give it a little second to read that and in a moment that should open up. So first of all to get rid of the the little spot at the top there that's really easy. We're just going to use the patch tool. Just draw around that. And we can actually just drag to the side. And that's it. It's gone. We can do the same with this one here. There's a little tiny one there. And we're looking okay now, I think. So with the uh, people over here, what we're going to do now, we're going to use the content aware fill tool. So if I use the lasso tool and just draw around those people, and we go to edit content to wear fill. I don't know if you can see that in the uh, on the screen at the minute, um, but it's under edit and then content to wear fill. Um, and then you get the little preview just here to see what that's done. And that's not too bad. It looks a bit strange up close, but if I click apply and OK, deselect and zoom out. That's not too bad. And I'll probably just, some of the edges are just a little bit sharp there, so I'd probably just go in with the clone stamp. Um, maybe make a new layer. And just clone over the edges of that sharp bit, just to soften it a bit. If you've got more time, you can obviously spend more time on this and make it look better, but I think that'll do for the purposes of uh, this little demonstration. And there we go. I think that's more or less done. So we can save that, bring it back into Lightroom and export it. So a bit of a long one this week. If you've made it this far, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, then please subscribe. Uh, it was a great morning up in the Peak District. I had a really good time taking those photos. So I hope you like watching the little clips and uh, the editing process at the end. Uh, I'm going to try and do a few more of these type of videos, get out to some nice places, maybe some seascapes, forests, that kind of thing. And I think what I might do in the future is split these videos up. So I'll show the process and the outdoors kind of section in one video and then maybe do a midweek video of the editing process. So yeah. Uh, hope you liked it. Thanks again for watching. Uh, see you again for the next one. Bye for now.